Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in Edupedia World. Today we continue with the lesson on how new ideas spread in 16th century Europe. And if you remember where we left it in the last lesson, we are going to talk about an invention that helped Luther's ideas widespread around the region. The printer, Gutenberg's printer, that is him. And we're going to talk a bit about this inventor that changed actually the course of history. He gave us a, an enormous tool that would modify how society worked. This is Johannes Gutenberg, born in uh, circa 19, uh, 1395, Mainz, Germany. He was a third son from a merchant family. As we said, he did impact the course of history with his inventions. He was kind of getting obsessed with the printer, we have to admit. At the start, what he did was improve the small metal type for each character. This change was enormous because until then it was done with wooden blocks. This is what I'm referring to if you can't picture it. Imagine before just carving wooden blocks with what you had to print and that A got destroyed easily and it was really costly. With this you just made it once and you could easily combine it anyway and use it infinite time. And we say improved because the movable type isn't exclusive to Europe as sometimes we tend to believe. Asia had been using them hundreds of years before. But this innovation is Gutenberg's, and that we can't forget. As we said, he was kind of obsessed. From uh, 1439, he was trying to find a way to make his idea of the print work, and, try, and tried various options until he had invested all his money and he was bankrupt. He then ended up obtaining finance from Johann Furst. Furst? I'm really bad at German. Forgive me, please. But Gutenberg even managed to go into debt after this loan had been given to him and he was not able to pay Furst back. That made him lose, afterwards, his printing business and all his income after he was sued by first. Actually, the people who kept Gutenberg's printing business were first and uh, Gutenberg's son-in-law, actually. <laughs> Family problems always happens and always will. That said, we have to say that it was during the trial he was unlucky. It wasn't until he was under trial that he finally achieved, in 1455, the first book ever printed in Europe from movable type. This is known today as a 42-line Bible, exclusive to Gutenberg. To understand the relevance of this invention, we have to see the cost of books. This was greatly reduced thanks to the printer. The reason is because you didn't need that workforce behind of someone manually copying or carving it faster and a lot, lot cheaper. Remember that until then, 
books had been an exclusive product that only a small, small number of people had access to. And we're talking mainly because of the cost. So basically kings, princes, very wealthy merchants and the church. Also, let's remember one little thing that um, many people don't stop and think about. The use of paper wasn't widespread in Europe till the 14th century. I'll stop a moment with this because how might you ask what was used before? What is why are you putting sheep on the screen? Before you needed sheep to make books. Yes. You might think you're like what? Yes, you needed sheep. And not only one or two. For a single book, you would need a whole flock of sheep. To make a good quality book, they use the skin, specifically the back and the stomach, because that was the widest part. And they needed to be, if it needed to be, for example, a very small, delicate book, you're not going to like this, but they would use the skin of unborn lambs. And they did not wait until there was an unborn lamb. They made it happen. So not very nice to think about. Also, then just imagine all the process. The skin had to be dried, treated correctly, and then handed to scribes that would copy the books by hand, page after page, illustration after illustration. That took years and years, and it was enormously costly. We have to say that, uh, yes, obviously, paper and wooden press had improved those conditions by now, but it was still not practical and really difficult to use in mass. The mobile metal characters made any combination possible and the speed of Gutenberg's print also made it achievable to make many copies at the same time. That's amazing for that time. It means you could just put our box there, out there. It was still not, not everyone could uh, afford one, but then um, a lot of people that before it would have been unthinkable, now they could. And well, why, how did this affect our angry monk, Luther? Well, yes, there was still much literacy, but remember that most priests could indeed read. And there were more than 2,000 editions of Luther's writings printed and spread, so priests were starting to read about Luther's ideas. And not only the books were powerful sources of information, but there was a great distribution of pamphlets, posters, and these were seen and read aloud, reaching then millions of people. And let's remember that the new translation of the Bible in German was read by thousands. Anyone could have now access to the Bible and share their own ideas, interpretations, remember? Now, you didn't depend on your local priest reading it to you and explaining the meaning of the text. You could think, read and think about it. Uh, the fact that people could take in the theology by themselves and reach their own conclusions helped also the creation of multiple branches. Uh, there was, it's not only the Protestant reform, uh, reform 
from the Protestant reform, you then got really charismatic people that build up their own branches. So we have the Calvinist, Anabaptist, Anglicans, Methodist, Baptist. They actually all come from this moment. This moment is the core that enabled all these branches of religion, of Protestantism, to come to light. And it wasn't only the a rise of new ideas and ways to understanding religious practices, but it actually escalated into social revolt. By 1525, Luther's widespread ideas had sparked what it was the little spark that was needed to ignite the fuel of long time suffering of peasants at the hands of the lords and the clergy. There was terrible pillages and destructions of churches. The, this is the German peasant revolt. It was, in this case, it was quite exclusive to that area. Using the same arguments as Luther, the people defended that served them was a man-made concept with no basis in scripture. And now they could prove it, because it had access to that scripture in a language they could understand. And they refused to pay taxes. You might be thinking, what's a serf? Well, a serf is a laborer that was bound to the land and his lord. Actually, the word slave comes from the same root, but Technically, a serve was not a slave. They still had some rights, although not that many. Was it that bad being a serve, you might ask yourself? Well, actually, yes. You couldn't leave the place without your lord's consent. You had to pay taxes for the use of the land. And in exchange, you did have protection sometimes. But no one protected you from your lord. You were protected from the other lords and armies and sometimes bandits. You had to work the land, sometimes the forest and the mines. And if your lord sold or gave away the land, actually you were going with it as part of the pack. So you weren't really considered human. You were just part of the wealth of your lord. You weren't a free man or woman, you couldn't leave the place and do as you wished. And in some areas, there was quite a widespread of malpractices by feudal lords. For example, some made serfs pay if the house of mania was burnt, as the house that they were living in was considered property of the lord. So, if, for instance, some bandits paid by the Lord just decided to burn some houses. You had a bunch of peasants that went bankrupt trying to pay back an enormous debt that it wasn't their fault. And on top of all this that we've said, imagine, the church had been getting richer and richer putting more expenses and controlling the religious information that was given. Not surprising that when they got new ideas, these people couldn't stay still. But actually, this was not what Luther had intended. He was, he took the side of the elite when all this started. He then just said that he, his intention was only a spiritual reform, not social. He said it was spiritual from the heavens, not from this earthly world. So we know that Luther did not want the consequences that had his reformation had, or at least not all of them. These changes 
one put in a fortnight actually uh, you didn't the revolt ended up in a year uh, but people weren't content anymore they weren't just resigning themselves to that type of of life and for the following centuries you will have uprisings and fights it all started here well this was the third part of this lesson in the next part we are going to take an example of one peasant in the 16th century and we'll see how the ideas we've been talking about affected his life and the rural community i hope you enjoy the lesson and i uh, see you in the next one